Quiero estar más cerca de ti Más cerca de ti Hoy el reto se hace más grande y los días se acortan Más de ti necesito en mí Yo quiero estar más cerca de ti Más cerca de ti Hoy el reto se hace más grande Y los días se acortan Más de ti necesito en mí Más cerca de ti Es donde quiero estar Vivir en comunión Sentir tu amor y estar en ti Más cerca de ti Es donde quiero estar Vivir en comunión Sentir tu amor y estar en ti Más cerca de ti es donde quiero estar Vivir en comunión Sentir tu amor Y estar en ti Yo quiero estar más Cerca de ti Más Cerca de ti Hoy el reto se hace más grande Y los días se acortan Más de ti necesito en mí Yo quiero estar más cerca de ti Jesús, más Cerca de ti Hoy el reto se hace más grande Y los días se acortan Más de ti necesito en mí Levanta tus manos y dilo Más cerca de ti Más cerca de ti Es donde quiero estar Vivir en comunión, sentir tu amor y estar en ti Más cerca de ti es donde quiero estar Vivir en comunión, sentir tu amor y estar en ti Más cerca de ti Quiero estar, vivir en comunión, sentir tu amor y estar en ti Más cerca de ti, es donde quiero estar Vivir en comunión, sentir tu amor y estar en ti Ese es nuestro clamor, Padre, en esta hora. En nuestro culto de oración, Señor. Esa es nuestra petición. Esa es nuestra oración, Padre. This is where we cry out our petition and our heart to live closer to you, to obtain perfect faith, communion, what you had, 
with Eve, with Adam. As Enoch walked with you, we want to walk with you. This is the hour of the rapture. This is the hour of the taking up. That's why you are getting us ready, teaching us through the fivefold ministry. Everything that binds us to this land of sin, may we be ready. This is why you break down your word to us. You whisper your words of love. We give you thanks, Father. After these cyber fellowships, we want to be closer to you, to live every instant on our knees, crying out. But yet we are still conscious that we, we need to live here in this world, but keep us from the evil that we see around us. Renew our strength. Increase our faith as we hear your word. Veo su gracia al pensar que él me eligió. Y ocurre cada vez cuando estoy en oración. Las cosas que él me dice. Arden en mi corazón Él me revela a mí La razón por que nací En esta edad Y así me quedo de rodillas Espero con paciencia de rodilla tu derramamiento de rodillas. Jesús te espero de rodilla. Creo que nací Simiente predestinada de mi Dios Sobrime gracia Me eligió para esta carrera oh. Daré mi vida entera a Él Perfecto y sin pecar No lo puedo hacer Señor Mis huesos secos has vivir Si esta vida debo dar Por ti yo viviré Te necesito Dios Necesito Dios al venir me hallarás de rodilla en anticipación de puede venir de tu pastor Jesús te espero de rodilla llena Miente predestinada de mi Dios 
sublime gracia me eligió para esta carrera oh. dígale al Señor daré mi vida entera a Él perfecto y sin pecar no lo puedo hacer Señor mis huesos secos has vivir si esta vida debo dar por ti yo viviré te necesito Dios te necesito Dios al venir me hallarás de rodilla en anticipación de rodilla Jesús te espero de Guerreros gentiles del ferviente deseo de Ana, del coraje de este, fueron verdaderos y recibieron la señal, pero que de mí. Quiero cantar Las bendiciones Ya son mías Más tengo Que esperar Así como Elías Aquí estoy Por fe Sabiendo que Tú vendrás Señor Tú vendrás Al venir Me hallará Pero de rodilla lléname de ti de rodilla dame fe de rato de rodillas Jesús te espero Señor, Dios les bendiga mis hermanos. Bien, como estaba diciendo nuestro hermano José Luis, después de esto. Aleluya, glory to the Lord. God bless you brothers, as our brother José Luis was saying, after these days of Cyber Fellowship, this Cyber Fellowship has been very special, the work together, all of the Cyber Fellowship that we have is a uh, coordinated uh, work. We coordinate and the Lord helps us to do this, but this one was something special because even as you notice, uh, the, the songs, the worship, the majority of that was uh, work together, the violin, the cello, in Brazil, the daughters of our brother Julio, Julio, 
Cesar, and then also the violins from Trinidad, the singers from Mexico, Indonesia, Peru, the Caribbean, from all of the Caribbean, from Brazil, the church of Brother Samuel, no doubt it was an immense work, very tiring, but the result of all of that was very special, has been very special. If the Lord gives us a space for another Cyber Fellowship meeting, it seems it will have the same uh, tone of the work uh, together to make the gifts in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ to work in team, at least those that we have access to. This time we didn't have our brother Malcolm that we love and esteem very much. He was in uh, some meetings in, I forget the name now. Where was he? The Philippines. So we missed his presence in the meetings, but he was praying and we were also praying, uh, commending him and desiring that the Lord use him in the meetings that he was having. So last night we had a, a brief meeting with our brothers, minister, uh, ministers that gather in a group that we call Latin American pastors, but it's really not just uh, Latin American pastors. Uh, we just say that name to identify it, but they're pastors from the Caribbean, from the United States, from Mexico. Sometimes we've had um, brothers from other places, from other continents, but that's just so we can identify it. Um, so it was a bit brief because of a bit of exhaustion because of the activities, but thanks be to God that we get restored little by little. As the scripture says, the outer man uh, is wasting away, but the one, the inner man is renewed day after day advancing from glory to glory. Uh, so today, we're going to have our prayer meeting. This Sunday, I won't be here, uh, God willing. I will be in a meeting with Brother Raul Sainz in Lima. I believe we're going to transmit the service here in the afternoon. Uh, I hope so. The boys will be sending you the details in the announcements um, because apparently our brother does not have any uh, streaming uh, work through the internet, but we will do everything possible to, not to correct, but to uh, to see the technical details to have uh, to be able to stream from there to here. So the service would be in the afternoon. Uh, if not, then we'll make the announcements to see how we can have Sunday service. But I'm just letting you know uh, ahead of time so that you can help me in prayer. Our brother invited me some time, some months ago. And supposedly it had to be in February, but there were other situations and... We decided it for that time. Uh, all the way back then, we didn't even know we would have a cyber fellowship, but by God's grace, the dates didn't cross. So I am believing that it is the will of the Lord that I have some time to fellowship with our brother Raul. We're going to sit and talk about the things that are important to receive in this time. So help us. Remember, the purpose why we're here is to try to reach the last predestinated. We don't know who it is, so the only thing we have to do is just spread the, um, stretch forth our hands in a sign of fellowship, share the things that God has given us. If someone is of God, they will hear the voice of God and follow his voice, so we can only do that. Well, uh, so after these announcements... Um, I also want to make mention to you that our brother Mike 
They were in New York. By the way, our sister uh, Jessica is here with us. Uh, I can't say I'm going to announce it on Sunday. I won't be here. So uh, we're happy to have her here. The gifts that she has brought. The love, the appreciation of our brothers. She's also very uh, loved by all of us. We love her very much. We never thought that God would call her and uh, make her an instrument of so much blessing uh, for us. A lot of the work that we do, a lot of the work that we do has to do with the equipment that our sister has brought for us. A lot of her travel, she's done it, of course, because she loves us. But uh, a lot of the travel that she has done, she has done it with the intention of uh, helping us, bringing us the equipment that we need to do the recording work, the audio work, the video, the streams. So it resulted, she uh, turned out to be a very valuable uh, instrument in the hand of God. Maybe she might not even think about it, and I didn't think about it either, that it would be that way, but God knows how he uses every one of his children for his glory. So we are very blessed with her. Uh, glory to the Lord. Oh, yes. And our brother Mike was letting me know that our sister Yolanda, his grandmother, went to Texas, I believe it is. Texas? Arizona. To Arizona, where is one of the daughters of our sister Yolanda. Well, they operated her. Remember, she had a surgery uh, on, in her heart. And uh, she she did very well. Uh, I always joke around that she now she's running uh, laps. And so she uh, traveled to visit one of her daughters, um, Maori, who has been, in the last few days, she has been uh, watching our services. And now that she's there with our sister Yolanda, they've been watching to uh, see the Cyber Fellowship meetings and... She asked, uh, Mike asked if we could pray for her. Last night we had a, a prayer with the ministers in her favor. And so today we will also be praying for her, that the Lord may help her to stand firm, to remain standing, to set her eyes on Jesus Christ. All of her confidence, just like us, brother, all of our confidence needs to be placed on the Lord. Not, you know, there's something that is important, I think I've told you. When the Lord wrote the book before the foundation of the world, and he wrote it in his mind, because it's just a symbolism, remember, that book was written, and those were the thoughts of God that were in the back part of his mind. The deepest secret that he had, the inaccessible secret that no one had access to, those thoughts are us. And in that time, we, we were there, unexpressed. And in those thoughts, in his mind, he had the plan of redemption already. You know, before he began to create all things, he already had a plan of redemption. He wanted his attributes to be in glorified bodies, but to leave from attribute and reach glorified bodies in a in a perfect land god knew the lord in his thoughts he knew that the only way to be glorified bodies together with him in a physical land without sin is for the fall to take place there was no other way he had to make all creation for that plan of redemption he had to become a creator and in that creation he had to place things and some of those things would be perverted Lucifer, the angels that followed him, the serpent. And through that serpent, sin would enter into the children of God and, and all of us would have a perverted birth. He knew all of that and then he knew that he would have to come to the earth to become a man like us without sin, pay the price for us to recover all those things that had been lost and then take away sin by his death, remove sin, and then open a way so that we could be born again, we would know that we have a theophanic body in heaven, we would connect to that, and then, by the grace of God, we would receive the revelation 
that would take us to the millennium and then to the new Jerusalem, living in glorified bodies. All of that that God was going to achieve, he had it in his mind before the foundation of the world. That was the plan of redemption that he had. So before we were born, he had already chosen us. When the book of Romans says, Paul says, for the purpose of God to be fulfilled, he loved Jacob and hated Esau before they did good or bad. God had already loved Jacob and hated Esau. When in your mind you think like, oh, God loved Jacob there in that moment. No, he didn't love Jacob in that moment. Oh, in that moment he, he chose Jacob and hated Esau. No. Not in the moment they were they were born, not in the moment they were conceived. When was it that God loved Jacob and wrote a plan of redemption for Jacob? Because remember, Jacob meant a uh, supplanter, a liar, deceiver, a cheater. That's that's what that meant. His name meant. But God chose him to be Israel. When did he choose him? When did he love him? Before God created the world. In his eternal thoughts there in eternity in the back part of his mind in the book of redemption he had written the name of jacob he had already chosen him before jacob would be born before the world was created before he did good or bad god had chosen him that's why paul said it is by faith it is by grace not by works that any man should boast God didn't choose us because of our works. Because our works were evil. God didn't choose us for our works. He chose us by grace. Faith is, or salvation is by grace, rather. When did he choose us? When did he save us? When did he see us? Before the foundation of the world. So our works were evil, just like Jacob's. But even so, God had already loved us and God had already chosen us. That's what Paul says in the book of Ephesians. That's where our confidence rests. Sometimes we go through different things and we think that our works condemn us. And that's true. Our works condemn us, but grace has saved us. It's not our works that make us more saved or less saved it's not our works that make us bride of the lord jesus christ or foolish or blessed no what makes us into the bride of the lord jesus christ is election the grace of god there's nothing brother there aren't enough demons there isn't anything that can make god cast us away we cannot be cast away. We may have been deceived, corrupted. We could have been possessed by demons, whatever it may be. But God knew us. And this is how he loved us and chose us and placed our name in the Lamb's book of life. And he said, no one can erase you from there. That's grace. That's why we can rest. That's the rest that we have. But brother, I go through so many problems, so, so many difficulties. That was written in the book. And that was written to bring us closer to Him. As we were singing, closer to you. That's where I want to be, to live in communion. That's everything to us. Well, so let us pray then, brothers, for a moment. And then we'll have the biblical reading. Let us pray. Beloved Heavenly Father, these words that we hear are so great. These words that you have made reach our heart are so great. No wonder the eternal gospel that Luther preached. He said, We are saved by faith. And that is everything. It's showing that faith, the way our prophet taught us, is revelation. It's the understanding, the spiritual understanding 
that you bring to the soul of your children, that's a revelation given exclusively to those that are the eternal thoughts of God. By faith, we are saved. And this is not of men, this is of God. Salvation is the Lord's, no one else. We're not saved by our own ability. We're not saved by our abilities, capabilities, or our own dignity. No. We haven't come to be the sons of God. We always were the sons of God, eternally. Even when we were living that life of sin, corruption, even when we were trapped in denominational graves, even there, we were sons of God. We didn't know it. We were the gene. We were the seed there that still had not been awakened. It hadn't been quickened because the light had struck. The light had not struck it yet, but we were your children. You already knew it. And the moment had to come where that would that light would strike our souls and, and, and would make us come out of the prison of darkness and come into your kingdom. We give you thanks, Lord. No wonder Paul could say, he said, it, it is not I that do those sins. It's not me that did those things. Our prophet said, Satan took advantage of our first birth and made us do those things. But in reality, it was not the seed of God that sinned. The one that sinned was the body and the perverted spirit that we received because of our first birth. But the seed that was in the soul could not sin. It cannot sin because it is a part of God. It was there, uh, latent, uh, quote-unquote, dead waiting because even the scripture says that the seed of God cannot die or cannot sin rather because it is born of God the seed of God which is the word the incorruptible seed how could it sin how could how could there be darkness there when we can see these things Lord when that truth reaches our souls when we know that we your children we are not this body of flesh. No wonder Paul said, if this, our earthly tabernacle, not ourselves, but our earthly tabernacle be dissolved, if this earthly house sinned and was corrupted, it's not this earthly house that will inherit the kingdom of God. Because neither flesh nor blood can inherit the kingdom of God, the mortal, the corruptible, cannot inherit the kingdom of the heavens. That's why the mortal has to be swallowed up by the immortal. The, corrupt, the corruptible has to be swallowed up by incorruption. Father, that is the, the truth that has reached our souls that came to us because the judge came down. And when the judge examined, when he examined all of us, he didn't come to see our body, neither our spirit. Of course, he must have seen it, but he came to see the deepest part of us, the soul, and he found that we are your children, Lord. Since we are your bride, the judge said, my bride doesn't even smell of sin. The judge said, to begin with, she never sinned. We give you thanks, Lord. Who can speak of these truths, Lord? When our prophet preached all these things, when he said, I want to take away that thought that you're going to commit apostasy, there's no way you cannot commit apostasy. He was speaking to us, the bride. When you yourself, Lord Jesus Christ, were on the earth, you said that the lie, the deception would be so great that if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. They cannot be deceived. You said we were in the palm, in the palm of your hands. 
You said that no one can take us away from your hands. What more security than that? So many things, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord. And we pray that this thought, that these words of yours may become so, so deep in our soul that they may be nailed down there and, and subject our flesh when those thoughts want to come that want to bring condemnation or doubt or confusion or, or, or questions to make us doubt that this revelation that is in our soul, uh, may it dissipate all things. May we have the helmet of salvation, that helmet that protects our head from the thoughts that the enemy launches against us in this mind battle. May we hold on to your word. Because everything that the devil says are lies, arguments, reasoning, Lord. But what you say is the truth. Help us to remain there, Lord. Thank you for having called us for this hour, Lord. Thank you for telling us that we are the skin in which you, the resurrection and the life, are operating in this time. It's not that we are the resurrection and the life, but you and us are the resurrection and the life. You said that she is him. The bride is him. We can see the feminish part. It, 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 people see the, the bride it, on the exterior, but on the interior, it is you. In the book of Revelation, it says, The Spirit and the bride say, Come. It is the Spirit speaking through us. It's the Spirit bringing His words, using our lips. That's why you said that the bride under her messenger is the final voice to the final age. And that is so, Lord. Help us to believe it. The enemy comes in, Lord, because that is his, his job. He's a tormentor. But you said that if we receive the, the true revelation of the true church, that we are the invincible army, that we are the super race, Satan would be bound. If we could discern by the Holy Spirit the, the two spirits in the framework of the church, Satan would be completely powerless he won't be able to do anything against us, just like he wasn't able to, to fight against you in the temptation in the wilderness. That's why help, Lord, that we may understand, Father, that we are the bride of Jesus Christ, the virtuous bride of Jesus Christ, the immaculate bride of Jesus Christ, that there is nothing against us, that we have received the abstract title deed that... It has been examined to the last point. There's nothing against, nothing that Satan can take a hold of or can grab, can hold on to. We are the legitimate heirs. The things that you purchased on Calvary, what Adam forfeited, what he traded in exchange for his wife, all those things, you recovered them at the cross of Calvary. And in this day, you came down with the book and you have brought it to us. You didn't just place it in our hands, but that book, which you yourself are, we have eaten it. It has entered into our belly. It is in us. And now that book that is in us is the one that speaks, that prophesies once more, that prophesies again. Lord, it is you. You yourself in us. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father. Therefore, dissipate all doubt, all confusion. Lord, may we take a hold of eternal life. May we know that we are anchored there to the holiest place. May we know, Lord, that we are living in the secret of your tabernacle. May we know, Lord, that you have placed our feet upon a rock. 
that we may know that we will see the living. That we will see you in the land of the living. May we know that we are living in Mount Zion. That we've been drawn near to the congregation of the firstborn, the multitude of angels, witnesses to the new Jerusalem. May we know that is where we are, Lord. May it not be an imagination, just a, uh, a guess. May we know that it's by grace, not by our works, but may we also know, Lord, that you who dwells now in us, you are the one who helps us to do the works that you left to be done in the time of the bride, in this end time. May we know that it is you in this day fulfilling your works, that it is us in this day who have become your prisoners, prisoners of love, and, and that we do only what is pl pleasing to you because we, your bride, we have the thus saith the Lord, because the secrets that were in you, Lord, the most, the deepest secret, the most inaccessible secret has been placed in the heart of the bride, that we are Jesus in bride form, that it is you walking in this day through every son, every daughter, be they ministers or lay members, elders, children, scholars, illiterate, it is you, Lord. You yourself doing your works. Like when you were a, a young man and you were a, a carpenter, it was Jehovah in the form of a carpenter. So in this day, may we, may we not despise any of your works done through each one of your children, Lord. Because we're all members in particular of your body. And each one of us, you've assigned us a function. Those functions are not greater or smaller. Every one of those are important in your body. No one is greater. No one is smaller, Lord. Like Paul said, no one can tell another member, I don't need you. We all need each other. Everything is important. No wonder you talked about gold, incense, and myrrh. If we had to present that to human reasoning, who would choose to be myrrh? Or who would choose to be the incense if, if they could choose being gold? Everybody would have wanted to be gold, but only gold alone could not bring the full message. Gold, incense, and myrrh was necessary to bring the message. Didi, in service until death, who, in human reasoning, would want to be the hyssop? Everybody would have wanted to be cedar or a lily or chamomile or, or the fig tree or the vine. No one through human reasoning would have wanted to be the hyssop. But the hyssop is everyday faith, pure faith in, in the heart of the believer. Hyssop is the plant that can be found everywhere. Hyssop is the one that was chosen to uh, dip it in blood and and place that blood on the lintels of the of the door. Without the hyssop, the blood could not be applied, Lord. That's why we understand, Lord. Or like Solomon who said, consider the ant, how it works, how wise it is. What human would pay attention to uh, an ant? But you placed it there, and the wisest man on the earth after you, he said, consider the ant, how hard it works, how it stores up food in the winter, or for the time of the winter showing us how you have placed wisdom in all these creatures, Lord. There aren't any great things or small things for you. So, how could we take any vain glory or boast to be greater 
or smaller than than others or how could we live with inferior inferiority complexes that that we don't that we're no good for anything when you have come to tell us that we are the skins in which you have hidden your glory how could we lord despise or not value what you have made us you've said that the potter made us into vessels of glory vessels for your honor we remember there lord when babylon nebuchadnezzar came and he conquered and he took all the vessels away when the time of the restoration came of the return lord all the vessels had to be returned all of the utensils if they were uh, spoons or pots or vases it didn't matter all of those utensils were counted numbered and when the time came to come back they all came back not one was missing those utensils spoke of us we are all part of your house without those utensils without the altar the laver the the shoe bread without the candlestick without the incense without the censer you would not be able to go in lord you needed all the utensils for you to be there that's why we talk about a mystical body that's why we talk about your sovereign election that's why we talk about lord that you're looking for the last one to take us out of here because you the the marriage supper would not have been uh, complete like when that mother came to you and said grant that one of my children could be at your right side and another one in, in your left side in in your kingdom and you said i can't do that i can't assign now a position to one of your children and another position to another one of your children that's already been assigned from before the foundation of the world the table is set the names are in that table already and that supper won't begin until it's all complete therefore help us lord in this hour to work and labor for the last one to enter in help us to labor work so that we may all reach the maturity because no gr no green grain will be taken into the storehouse it all has to be golden grain ripe mature grain free from any uh, shuck or or shaft help us lord we are living in that time help us to believe lord and to accept what you have said of us father through the virtue of thy word being revealed to our souls break every chain any fetters that don't allow us to enjoy the privileges that you've brought for us lord break the power of those doubts dissipate all darkness all ignorance take it away from us and allow us to see the light very clearly striking the altar showing us that we are the heirs that we have returned to the position of sons help us lord help us to know that there is nothing impossible help us to know that in this hour two omnipotences have been united you and us help us to understand that the written word has united with the prophesied word which we are help us heavenly father that by the word being revealed being made clear to us may the chains the fetters fall and, and the darkness may disappear dissipate help us lord
May we know that all of our sins, absolutely all of them, were taken by the, the male uh, goats. You, one, you were the, the male goat that died paying for our sins and then another male goat was was the, the scapegoat to be cast far 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 away taking our sins far until they could not be seen laying them all upon satan lord every accusation all condemnation all judgment has gone back to satan and his angels and you have delivered us from everything lord help us therefore to live in that in that reality as the bible says and our prophet commented he said that you became a curse a curse for us and you made us the righteousness of god the prophet said that you know in those days that we hardly understand that so that's why we ask that in this day we may know that that is true that we are the righteousness of god that you at the cross of Calvary, you you took our evil and you placed it upon yourself. You paid for us and all of your righteousness, your dignity was transmitted to us, was imputed unto us. Like there in the Old Testament, as a as a shadow, the worshiper would lay his hands on the on the lamb and place all of his evil, his sins his lack of dignity and transmit them to the lamb and the purity and the innocence of the lamb would come upon the worshiper just as a symbol of what really has happened in our days help us lord help us to accept this truth enlighten us make that truth shine and dissipate every doubt all confusion then we know that we have access to forgiveness, to healing, to joy, to deliverance. Then we know that we have access to the word that was kept for us. Then we know that we have access to the virtue to keep ourselves standing in the midst of the squeeze. Then we know that, that we have access to divine love being poured out in our hearts, divine, divine love that casts out all fear. We give you thanks, Lord. Oh, how much we bless you, Lord. We thank you because you sent your Holy Spirit in this day to make things clear. We thank you because you sent your prophet to preach all these things to us that are now real in our hearts. We thank you because you sent faithful ministers with a light that you gave to the messenger and now you're spreading that light to make sure that light reaches your children. We give you thanks for the work that you are finishing up in this hour. We give you thanks because we know that the time when you will take us out of here is, is approaching. We give you thanks because the time is drawing near where we will have a meeting here. All of the redeemed, those that had our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, before the foundation of the world, we'll have a meeting here in bodies like your own body. Oh, Father, and then we will go up to the marriage supper. We give you thanks for these things, Lord. And while we're here, continue bringing your word to our hearts, Lord. Increase our faith. Make it a, a mighty faith, Lord. Increase our faith until we reach the level where we can raise our brothers as well and then the resurrection will take place. Help us, Lord, to fully enter into this third pull. Thank you so much, Father. We commend our brothers that are in necessity, our sister Maori. We pray that your grace may, may extend towards her we give you thanks for every son of yours, every daughter of yours. We pray for all of them. I, I pray for our brother Juan Pinedo there, Lord, in, in Chincha. We pray 
that he, like all of us, we go through problems, Lord, afflictions, the cares of this life, what we shall eat, what shall we dress, things that come to attack us, Lord. But may we believe, Lord, that you are able to care for us, Lord. You, Lord, in the midst of so much evil, even so you care for the birds, you care for the flowers, the lily, how much more, Lord, would you not care for us? You have demonstrated it, bringing the truth to our souls. You, you have protected us from all deception. You've taken us out of the house of hell, the prison house. You've kept us from all lie. In this time of the quarantine, this time of the squeeze, you have delivered us from fear, deception, from receiving these poisons called vaccinations. Lord, how much more as the danger increases, you'll help us even more. Now that they are bankrupting the nations and taking away resources to survive, how much more should we trust in you? Our trust is not set, Lord, on how much money we have or how much uh, stored up food we have or if we have a house or clothing. No, Lord. Our confidence is placed on you, Lord. You can make our clothing never wear out and our shoes to remain new. You can make it, Lord, so that our um, flour and oil would never run out. You could do so many things. You can make the lion be um, meek in the presence of the Daniels of this hour. You can make the hot oil that they cast John in. Uh, you can make it a, like a relaxing bath. You're able to do all of these things for your children. You can make it that in our life, Lord, we may receive uh, stonings like, like the ones that Stephen received and not feel the, the pain, but, but to behold your glory. We, we trust in you. You, Lord, in the days of economic problems, in, in the days of famine, you had crows to feed uh, Elijah. You multiplied the resources in the in the house of the widow of Zarephath. You, Lord, you yourself came down in the form of an angel. And you baked uh, loaves of bread for uh, Elijah, the one that would go in the rapture. Wouldn't it be the same thing for us in this day, Lord? We have to trust in you, Lord. Help us. Increase our faith, Lord. We don't say that we don't have faith, but we're telling you, Lord, please, we're asking you, increase our faith. Make it be perfect faith, supreme faith for supreme grace, for the supreme hour. Lord, we commend this service unto you in these days that are ahead of us, Lord. We pray for every servant of yours, for the work that you have commended us, you promised to guide us, Lord, as you led Paul, as you led Peter, Philip, as you led Aquila and Priscilla, Barnabas. Lord, guide us. We are the return of the Alpha Bride coming in the form of the Omega Bride. Guide us, Lord. You are our leader that what we can do, may it be for the benefit of your people, may we work with boldness before the people of a prince would destroy everything. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for all of these things. Amen and amen. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, Let's open our Bibles now for our reading. We are in Second Samuel.
capítulo 19. Chapter 19 of the book of 2 Samuel. It says on this wise, Dieron aviso a Joab, he aquí el rey llora y hace duelo por Absalom. And it was told Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. Well, let's be seated for a moment. Uh, to recap, we have remembered, we need to remember that what is taking place here, this taking place in chapter 19 is taking place in in a city called Mahanaim. We remember that Absalom, the king's son, had rebelled against David he made a, a military coup, a great conspiracy. Many joined to Absalom, and the king had to flee. And in his flight, God provided him help, rescue that would remain, so that in some way they would um, be. Uh, they would make uh, all the plans that Absalom had uh, to kill David fail. Uh, Absalom wanted to kill his own father. How can you reach that point? How could you reach the point where a son could be so, you know, it has to be by demonic possession. How could the point come where a child, a son, desires the, the wife of his father, the kingdom of his father, a point where a child desires the death of his own father, not just the death, but that he himself to plan his death, and he himself wants to kill his own father. That has to be demonic. There's no other way. That was Satan in Absalom. That's how it was. And there were other angels, fallen angels, that uh, went inside all of Absalom's associates to persecute David. And well, uh, we, have, we had said that David and his human emotions, he told his soldiers to forgive Absalom, that he was his son and not to kill him. That was the feeling of Absalom. And like I told you, I may be wrong, but it was it was uh, David's humanity. He should have known that was a enemy. He should have known that. So chapter 19 then. We see they come from the battle They've defeated Absalom's army, and Joab killed Absalom. Joab and his personal guard uh, finished Absalom. They brought the announcement that they had victory, that the enemies were defeated, and Absalom died. And David, instead of being happy because he had gotten the victory, instead of that, he began to weep for the death of his son, of Absalom. That there, of course, it wasn't right. David's emotion may have been as a, as a father to weep for his son no matter what, but he couldn't forget, David could not forget the, the surrender of his soldiers. We talked of David when he said, who would bring me a drink, water to drink from the well, and we see the soldiers that risk their lives to satisfy the desire, the longing of David. They didn't care to go in the midst of the enemy, in the midst of the camp of the enemy, risk their lives to bring a little bit of water for their king. And we see there in that moment, we see how the Holy Spirit did a work in David. And he said, how could I drink the lives of, of these men? It's their life. Their life. That wasn't just a, a drink of water. That was the life of his of his mighty men, the love and the respect of his mighty men. He said, how could I drink this? I'm not worthy of this. And he poured it to the Lord because he said, this is for my God. This is the offering given to my God, not for a man. So that's when you begin to value it. But here, the the feeling of, of David, his emotions as a father, clouded his judgment. He didn't value how his soldiers had given their lives for him, for his house, for his wives, for his position in the kingdom, in the kingdom of David, they risked everything, risk their lives. And instead of making an offering, a gratefulness for that uh, surrender, he wept for his, for his son, the traitor. 
We're not saying that he shouldn't have those emotions for his son, but he had to judge, he had to measure, he had to value, he had to bring um gratefulness to the people that followed him as a, a rejected king. They abandoned their pos their possessions. They had followed him and risked their lives. He should have demonstrated a gratefulness for those things. He didn't do so. The pain, the feeling of pain of the loss of his son made him, made him forget this other part. So, verse 2 now. And the victory that day was turned into a into mourning, weeping, a loss. You see the attitude of the leader, what that caused? The people were happy. We're going to make our king come back. The We've overcome the enemies of our king. They wanted to destroy our king and we defeated them. They were happy. And when they heard that the king was weeping, my son, my son. He didn't he didn't care about the victory. How many of our own were wounded to go, you know, visit the hospitals? Let's pray for the Lord to to recover them. None of that. So what happened? The victory that day. Ah, yeah. It was uh turned into mourning. He had pain. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. They felt. So what we did cause our king pain? Instead of making him happy that we defeated his enemies, it causes him pain. We, we do. They felt ashamed. They felt sadness. They felt mourning. They themselves mourned as if something bad had happened. Listen now. And the people got them by stealth that day into the city. As people being ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. You see how a victory, when it is not valued correctly, how it it could mean nothing, how it could shut down the discour the, the the encouragement of people very quickly. They they came in like stealthily as if they had been ashamed, defeated. But the king covered his face and the king cried with a loud voice, Oh my son, Absalom, oh Absalom, my son, my son. The crying of David. He wasn't thinking about anything else, just Absalom. And Joab came into the house to the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, which this day have saved thy life and the lives of, of thy sons and of thy daughters and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines. What he was saying was correct. What he was saying was correct. What was the problem with Joab? That he spoke to him without any respect. He, he didn't have any respect to the king. He should have told him, <coughs> King, what you're doing is wrong. But no, he went to talk to him disrespectfully. Look at what he says. Verse 6. In that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends. For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants. He didn't declare that. Of course, his emotion, the emotion, the attitude that he was having could make those things be understood that way, but it wasn't so. Then he says, for this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived and all we had died this day, then it had pleased thee well. See, that's what it appeared like, right? Verse 7. Now therefore arise, go forth. Who's speaking now? The king? Joab is talking. He's talking to his king like this. And he's giving orders to his king. Now, therefore, arise! Imagine how he must have been talking to him. I, I'm i seeing here the attitude of Cain when the Lord told him. When the Lord said, Where, where's your brother? He said, what? Am I his, his my brother's keeper? 
did you hire me to be his his uh bodyguard you see that that's the attitude here he's disrespecting the king that's the anointed remember david's attitude when they told him there he is saul god put him in your hands strike him at once just kill him with one strike and he went and he just cut the 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 border of his mantle and his heart was troubled because he had done something against the anointed of God, the respect that he had towards the king. When this man came saying, Saul died, and he, this Amalekite, he was agonizing and he said, cast your sword against me. And he said, you didn't have respect on the anointed of the Lord. Your words condemn you. Kill him. Look at the respect that he had for the anointed of God. And now here's Joab Joab has to know that is his king. Joab has to know the anointing is upon him. And look at how he speaks to him. Arise! You disrespected me. You showed me you you love those that hate you more than we. Get up! Talking to the king like that? Now therefore arise, go forth, and speak comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou go not, go not forth, Go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night, and that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from thy youth until now. What do you think? You see the disrespect? I swear I'm going to be your worst enemy. To the king? Verse 9 or eight rather then the king arose and sat in the gate and they told unto all the people saying behold the king doth sit in the gate and all the people came before the king for Israel had fled every man to his tent everyone had gone remember that they came from all the tribes to fight against David they all left they had fled but the people in Mahanaim, Mahanaim is in, you remember the land of Israel is divided on this side, on the east and the west, right? The east is the side that is from Jordan to Mesopotamia. You have the Jordan that splits the land, and there you have what is more to the east is Mesopotamia, that, that way. Those were the tribes, the two and a half tribes that were left behind. Gad, Manasseh, they stayed on that side. Remember that? When, so when David fled, he fled from Jerusalem, crossing Jordan, and he passed from west to east to Mahanaim. If you have a map, boys, of Mahanaim, place it, and then we'll realize that Mahanaim is crossing the Jordan River. When the war was over and David won, then all of Israel that came from all the other tribes, everyone crossed Jordan and they went to their land. The people that were with David remained. The people that were with David remained. His soldiers and the inhabitants of Mahanaim, they stayed. When the king went out to the gate of the city, remember, this is in Mahanaim. Let me see if I can find where it says that it was Mahanaim. Let me see where it is. Here, I think it's here. Verse 24 of chapter 17. Then David came to Mahanaim, and Absalom passed over Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. Where was his, Where was David in Mahanaim? There you see Gad, Manasseh, and then you see Mahanaim. You see the Jordan River? Jerusalem is to the other side, crossing the Jordan River. There's Jerusalem down there, you see? Judah. You see Benjamin. You see Jerusalem there. David abandoned Jerusalem and fled to Mahanaim. Bien, entonces, allí se encontró con, con quién se encontró? 
So there he met with who? 1727 says that he... It came to pass when David was come to Mahanaim that Shobi, the son of Nahash, of Rabbah, of the children of Ammon, and Machir, the son of Amiel, of Lodabar, and Barzillai, the Gileadite of Rogalim, brought beds and basins and earthen vessels of wheat and wheat, and barley and flour and parched corn and beans and lentils and parched pulse. So these men helped David in Mahanaim. So now David is here in Mahanaim, and he went uh, to the gate and all the people came. But Israel that had come with Absalom, they all fled. Everyone had returned to their tribes. All right, that's clear, right? Verse 9. And all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel. There it is. Now it's telling us what is happening in the tribes now. What's happening in, in all the tribes. What was happening? They were at strife. What was the discussion, the debate? And all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king saved us out of the hand of our enemies, and he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines, and now he's fled out of the land for Absalom. You see what he's saying? Our king fled. He went there. He crossed the Jordan River, and he's in Mahanaim. And Absalom, who, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now, therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing the king back? You see what they said? Brothers, don't you understand? Our king fled. David fled. He, he fought our battles. He, he gave us security and he fled. And Absalom rebelled and we recognize him as a king. Now they killed him. He died. What are we doing here? Let's go bring the king Let's bring him back to recognize that we made a mistake. Let's put him in the throne in Jerusalem again. That was the, the discussion, the strife in uh, all the tribes of Israel. Verse 11. And King David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar the priest, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why to the elders of Judah? Why not to the elders of Israel? Why to the elders of Judah? Because the elders of Israel were already saying, let's bring the king back. But those of Judah were not. Why were those of Judah not doing that? Who were the ones that rebelled against David? Who rebelled? What tribe rebelled against David? The tribe of Judah. Who was Absalom? Wasn't he from the tribe of Judah? Who were the ones that conspired, that were allied with him? Weren't they from the tribe of Judah? Who was Amasa, Absalom's general? Wasn't he from the tribe of Judah? That's why those of the tribe of Judah were afraid. Now what's going to happen? We were the rebels. We infected all of Israel to rebel, and so they were just quiet. They were ashamed. Fear and shame. And so then David, verse 11, And King David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar the priest, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house? Seeing the speech of all Israel is come to the king, even to his house. See, everybody's saying, King, come back, we'll bring you. And you're, you're quiet? What's what's wrong with you? What's going on? Verse 12 now. So that was opening the door to Judah saying, I'm not angry with you. You think I'm going to destroy you? You think I'm going to avenge? Just come on. You're my brethren. You are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore then are ye the last to bring back the king? And say ye to Amasa, Are thou not of my bone and of my flesh? Now listen now. God do so to me, and more also, if thou be not captain of the host before me, continually in the room of Joab. You see what he's saying now? Who was Amasa? Absalom's general. Amasa, 
You know, David had two sisters, right? One was named Zeruya, uh, the mother of Joab of Abishag, and the other one was Abigail. These were sisters of David. And Abigail had a son, and that son was named Amasa, was this one here. So Amasa and Joab were cousins, uh, brothers, cousins, both generals. One was general of David, Joab, and the other one was the general of Absalom. He was his, his cousin. Amasa was his cousin. A cousin brother uh, of Joab, and he was the nephew of, uh, they were both nephews of David. They were sons of his sisters. That's why in verse 13, And say ye to Amasa, Are thou not of my bone and of my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if thou be not captain of the host, if thou be not captain of the host before me continually in the room of Joab. What was happening with David? David considered, Joab won't be faithful to me. Joab has demonstrated what's in his heart. So I'm going to seek one that is better than Joab. And the one that is better is Amasa. Although he was in the army of, of Absalom, Amasa is better than Joab. He said, you will be my, my general, the captain of, of the host. I'm going to take out Joab and I'm going to make you general. He's swearing it to him. Verse 14, and he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word unto the king, return thou and all thy servants. So the king returned and came to Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal to go to meet the king, to conduct the king over Jordan. You see? So the elders of Judah came to receive him, to make like a, a committee, you know, to bring him back. Verse 16, And Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, which was of Bahurim, hasted and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. Remember Shimei? The one that cursed him? That, you know, threw dirt at him. Dead dog, you know, he, he called David. Remember that? Traitor. That's what happens to those that rebel. Those that shed innocent blood. You bloody man. And he cast dust and stones, rocks. And Abishag said, My Lord, let me take out my sword and cut the head off of this dead dog. Remember that? And David said, No, no, no. And the Lord told him to speak this way. Who am I to, to shut him up? So, and there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him. And they went over Jordan before the king. Remember Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, the lame son of uh, Jonathan, his servant, the one that brought the the um, donkeys with the raisins, uh, figs, they were all there. And there went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. And Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king as he was come over Jordan and said unto the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely the day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should that, that the king should take it to his heart. For thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come the first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. You see how he was ashamed now? This is a, a preview of what's going to happen when every knee shall bow before the king and before his queen. When they'll say, forgive me, I didn't mean to say it. Exactly the same. Verse 21. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, remember this? This is the one that said, I want to cut the head off of this dead dog. Remember that? Oh, there was Abishai. Mm. Now, now you're going to get it. See, verse 21. 
But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? He was ready again. You see, now, king, now do I cut his head off? And David said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah, that ye should this day be adversaries unto me? Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? Therefore the king said unto Shimei, Thou shalt not die. And the king swore unto him. These sons of Zeruiah, his, uh, David's nephews, they fought with David, but they had a temperament that, a temper like, they were jealous, it seems, right? I don't want to make a mistake here, but they seemed uh, envious. They liked uh, having a certain position. So verse 24 says, here it is. And Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king. Mephibosheth, the master of Ziba, the one that brought the donkeys with the figs and the lame son, came down to meet the king and had neither dressed his feet nor trimmed his beard nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. And it came to pass when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore wentest not thou with me, Mephibosheth? Where was I? Verse 25. And it came to pass when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Mephib Wherefore wentest thou not thou with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. Who was his servant? Ziba. My servant deceived me, for thy servant said, I will saddle me an ass, that I may ride thereon and go to the king, because thy servant is lame. Today you can't say, you know, lame. Uh, you have to say another word, right? They, they say it's not uh, politically correct. Because thy servant is lame, and he hath slandered thy servant unto my lord the king. But my lord, the king, is as an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eyes. For remember that Ziba told him he didn't want to come. He made an a he made himself an ally of Absalom because he said, now they're going to give me back all the things that belong to my family. That's why he hasn't come. But I, your servant, Ziba, I have come. It was a lie. We knew exactly how it was. Look at how, look at how these things happen. All these things. Why is it written this way? Why is it written? So that you don't get surprised when you find attitudes in the midst of the church. The brother's like this? That brother? What do you mean that brother? He's in the church. Now there are those brothers and there are other brothers that have attitudes that are not, you know, good, but they're our brothers, okay? So where are we? 28. For all of my father's house were but dead men. Mephibosheth is speaking here. For all of my father's house were but dead men. Before my lord the king. Yet didst thou set thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table. What right therefore have I yet to cry any more unto the king? He's saying, it's enough. You've, you've had mercy on me. What else do I want? You forgave my life. So how can I come to tell you, give me this and give me that? No, no, no. It's enough for me what you did. You've forgiven my life. Look at what else he says here. For all of my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet didst thou set thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table. What right, therefore, have I yet to cry any more unto the king? You see, Lord, you forgave me my life. You could have killed everybody. We were worthy of death. My family rebelled against you, and you forgave my life. And after that, you remembered my, my father, Jonathan, and you brought me to your table. My family lives, is, is uh, held up by the, the table of the king. I don't want anything. Do whatever seems good unto me. If you want to kill me, do whatever you want. 
That is like what the Prophet says, right? I love him so much that if he wants to send me to hell, Lord, send me to hell. I'll love you in hell. Who's going to go to hell loving God like that? So the Prophet said, since love can't be in hell, he can't send me to hell. Verse 29. And the king said unto him, Why speakest thou any more of thy matters? I have said, Thou and Ziba divide the land. And Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yeah, let him take all. For as much as my lord the king has come again in peace unto his own house, I don't care about the possessions. I'm happy because you came back, my king. You see? You see what it shows, how people... That's our attitude. We don't serve God for any reason. It's not out of interest. It's out of love. We deserve to be dead. We deserve to go to hell. And God changed our destiny. How can we not love him? No, but things go wrong. They go badly. That's why I can't serve God. What kind of love is that? No, but I asked the Lord for this for a long time and He doesn't grant it to me, so He doesn't love me. You didn't deserve anything. I didn't deserve anything. So because He doesn't give you something because of that, you think God doesn't love you? That, these things show us here how we have to mature in, in the way we think. Verse 31, And Barzillai, remember Barzillai now? The one that received David, in Mahanaim and gave him food. And Barzillai, the Gileadite, came down from Rogalim and went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. Now, Barzillai was a very aged man, even fourscore years old. And he had provided the king of sustenance while he lay at Mahanaim, for he was a very great man. Rich man is another translation. You see how God has some that are very rich to serve with a purpose? Sometimes, sometimes people that have possessions are a bit, um, I don't know, how can I say it? I don't know what the word would be. I hope that it's not too strong to say stingy. They're petty. They think that the things that God gave them are their own. Like Abigail's husband. What was his name? The one that was stubborn. What was his name? Nabal. Nabal. Na Nabal. He thought, these are my things. My work. My sweat. It's for me, for my family. Who are these to share it with? But this Barzillai didn't think so. He was a rich man. And he put everything that David needed at his disposition. Not like... Not like a little, you know, a little uh, tip. No. He was a rich man. He, How many men are they? For everybody. That's the attitude. So, you see, now that David was returning, now that David's returning, Barzillai, he wasn't just happy with attending to him at Mahanaim, but he went with the king. I'll, I'll go with you, king. I'll cross you to the other side of Jordan. For you to go back to your throne. Although he was a... 80 years was not that old, but certainly when it says very old, it meant that he was, you know, tired. Maybe the life he had was a, a very weary life. He was quite physically worn. It says, um, verse 33, And the king said unto Barzillai, Come thou over with me and I will feed thee with me in Jerusalem. And Barzillai said unto the king, How long have I to live that I should go up with the king into Jerusalem? I am this day fourscore years old, and can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Wherefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king? You see what he said? My lord, I'm old. I have my house. If I go there to live at your table, I thank you, but I'm 80 years old. Am I going to enjoy those things? Well, I like the the different feast and eating new food. Not, not anymore, Lord. Just let me, let me return to my house. 
It was a reward that David was giving him. Come with me, Barzillai. Verse 36. Thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king. And why should the king recompense me with such a reward? You see? It's way too much for me. 37. Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again, that I may die in mine own city and be buried by the grave of my father and of my mother. But behold thy servant, Kimam, let him go over with my lord the king, and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. So I can't, but I beg you, look at the attitude of Barzillai, the respect. Different than Joab, you see? A different attitude. I thank you, my king. I don't deserve that kind of recognition. I can't go, but I beg you. You know, I thank you for the invitation, but I'm old. Let me go back to my city. But I ask you a favor. Here is this man, this young man. Take him. What you are going to do with me, do it with him. I beg you. You see the, the approach. Kimam. And the king answered, verse 38, Kimam shall go over with me, and I will do to him that which shall seem good unto thee, and whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. And all the people went over Jordan, and when the king was come over, the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned unto his own place. Then the king went on to Gilgal, and Kimam went on with him, and all the people of Judah conducted the king, and also half the people of Israel. Verse 41. And behold, all the men of Israel came to the king and said unto the king, Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen thee away and have brought the king and his household and all David's men with him over Jordan? And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, because the king is near of kin to us. Wherefore then be ye angry for this matter? Have we, e have we eaten at all of the king's cost? Or hath he given us any gift? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, We have ten parts in the king. Because Judah was one tribe and the other ones were ten tribes. We have ten parts in the king. And we have also more right in David than ye. Why then did ye despise us that our advice should not be first had in bringing back our king? And the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. So the way of, of speaking of the people of Judah was, was heavier, and this produced something. I'm going to read to you the first verse of chapter 20. Verse 20, And there happened to be there a man of Belial, whose name was Sheba, the son of Bikri, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, We have no part in David, neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tent, O Israel. This one, because of the act of bringing David back to the throne, instead of giving him their loyalty he took advantage of this situation to produce another revolt you see how all these things happened remember why because David made the mistake of falling in love with a married woman and killing that man that's why the Lord said the sword shall not depart from your house so here this attitude of David being brought back to the throne produced jealousy in some in Israel and it was taken advantage of by this man of the house of Benjamin and this man of the house of Benjamin was the one who said all right let's go everyone to his house and he obtained a, a leadership so we'll talk about that in the next chapter well the Lord bless us thank you very much let us pray Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for your word, for the reading, Lord, for the comments that we've made. Lord, grant that these things may help us all, the little ones, those that are learning, Lord, and we that have 
walked a little bit farther in the journey. Help us all, Lord, with thy word. Father, we leave this meeting commending ourselves to you, placing our lives and our service in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen and amen. God bless you, brother, sister, until next meeting. A great shalom. Somos testigos de su majestad Hemos visto al Señor cumplir su palabra Y sabemos que somos personajes de su gran sinfonía Actuamos en lo que hemos visto y hemos oído ¿Cómo podremos vivir siempre alabándole somos? Epístolas vivas leídas de todos Para mí eres el poderoso Dios de nuevo encarnado Somos epístolas vivas Leídas de todos Para mí eres El poderoso Dios de nuevo encarnado Hoy sabemos que la palabra está en la novia Es Jesús Es Jesús en la segunda cabalgata Cabalgue su majestad Al lugar correcto El trono de nuestro corazón Te agradecemos por ser parte de tu reino ¿Cómo podremos vivir Siempre alabándole somos Epístolas vivas Leídas de todos Para mí eres El poderoso Dios del nuevo encarnado somos epístolas vivas, leída de todos. Para mí eres el poderoso Dios de nuevo encarnado. Cada día luchamos, cada día luchamos con la espada del Rey en la mano. Venciendo al enemigo a cada paso Traigamos al rey, al rey rechazado Agua limpia y fresca Por vivir dignos de este evangelio Le adoramos ¿Cómo podremos vivir siempre alabándole? Somos epístolas vivas, leídas de todos. Para mí eres el poderoso Dios de nuevo encarnado. Somos. Epístolas vivas, leída de todos Para mí eres el poderoso Dios de nuevo encarnado Somos epístolas vivas 
He visto las vivas leídas de todos Para mí eres el poderoso Dios de nuevo encarnado El Señor Jesucristo le bendiga mi hermano Tome su asiento Gracias Padre Aleluya